What's up fellow hunters, Nox here, welcome or welcome back. I'm seeing a lot of players having trouble with the new Risen Valstrax. So in this video we're gonna cover 10 tips that make the fight easier. We're gonna start with some things about the actual fight, then get into survival skills and dango, as well as beneficial palico and palamute setups. Let's get right into it. We're gonna kick things off with the new super ambush. He now rains meteors down from the sky before he crashes into the ground for the actual ambush. The best thing to do is spread out and try not to cross run each other. If you're having trouble with the timing, just look at the minimap. You can do a superman dive as soon as he moves and you'll be perfectly safe. If you find yourself inside the circle of meteors, don't panic. You can superman dive to avoid the explosions and get back up in time to do a second superman dive to avoid the actual ambush. And even if you do get hit by the meteors, try not to panic. It's gonna be close, but you can still avoid getting hit by the ambush with a superman dive. Next is a super common mistake I keep seeing with flash bombs. A lot of hunters are throwing them left and right like candy, which can be super dangerous. You want to try and limit the flash bomb uses to two things. One, when he goes into the air so you can make him drop down and interrupt his dangerous combo attacks. Or two, use them as an emergency break, if someone is about to get hit or if you really need to stop him from charging. This is very important to know because Valstrax will actually become completely immune to flash bombs for a while if they are spammed too much. And at that point, a flash will only blind the players and gives Valstrax an open shot to murder someone. Definitely use flash bombs, but try being mindful of the situation. Next, we're gonna cover 5 skills that can make a substantial difference in keeping you alive. Divine Blessing. At level 3, this has a chance to cut any damage we take in half, which can be a huge deal when fighting something that hits like a rocket-powered truck. Dragon Resistance. At level 3, it gives us plus 20 dragon resistance and a small defense bonus. This will simply reduce the overall damage we take. And since nearly all of his attacks involve elemental damage, this skill goes a long way for a very small price. Stun Resistance All of his attacks have so much range that getting stunned is insanely dangerous. He can easily kill you with an attack that was aimed at one of your teammates if you cannot move. And then we have two more skills that can work as safety nets. Guts and Intrepid Heart Guts is a one-time deal that will save you from a fatal hit, but it requires you to have a certain amount of health. If you're a gunner, Guts is an absolute hidden gem here. Because as a gunner, you're basically always in one-shot KO range when fighting him anyway. Meaning that even at level 1, Guts is a very effective safety net for you. And Intrepid Heart is a great general use. It can reduce any damage we take by 50 or 75% depending on the level, but it requires a gauge to be filled first. Two additional skills worth mentioning are Wide Range and Evasion. The first one for its team survival benefits and the second because it makes a lot of his moves much easier to deal with. Dango aka Food Skills. Here are three simple but effective setups to choose from. All of them have Dragon Resistance high for extra Dragon Defense. And Moxie which can save you from one fatal hit if your health is above the yellow marker on the bar. The third skill is where you have to choose. The first option has Defender High. This is basically a food skill version of Divine Blessing and can also reduce damage you take. The second option has Insurance, which will give you one free card or death per hunt. But this dango is a daily special and won't always be available. The third option has Booster for a small attack increase. Go for this one if you don't need any further defensive skills. Now we have beneficial buddy setups, starting with the Palicos. After testing, the combination that comes out on top is a Gathering Palico with the secret move Lottery Box. The Palico will be able to fire things like Paralysis and Sleep Totes at the monster, as well as use the Mini Dragonator or Kidinator from the Lottery Box for free knockdowns. Another thing that is very useful for this fight is giving the Palico the Shark Tripper move. This is great for two reasons. One, because it gives you an easy KO with any weapon type or even just Kunai. And two, because it also has a very high stagger rate. Meaning this move can put an instant stop to whatever nonsense Valstrax is up to at the moment. This setup will give us the highest possible chances for multiple free damage windows. The Whirlwind Assault is a personal choice, but it combos really well with Knockout King and either Status or Element Up. The Power Drum is optional as well and can be exchanged for anything else you might prefer. Be careful with giving your Palico the Flash Bomb move. As we addressed earlier, we want to limit any random flashing as much as possible. The Palamute setup is a lot simpler. There are only two things we want to make sure we have for the first setup. Ranged Centric and Artful Dodger. Palamutes have a more difficult time fighting Valstrax up close due to their movement and constant jumping around. Having them focus more on ranged attacks and giving them Artful Dodger will have them stay in the fight a lot longer. Which also increases the chance of them being available in case you need to escape or want to sharpen your weapon. For the Palamute gear it makes sense including the Palamute Silk Binder if you go with the ranged setup. And for the second slot I chose the Flurry Strike Scroll. 
Of course, you can still go for a close range Palamute if you want. Just make sure to give it Artful Dodger as well and remove ranged Centric. Then exchange the Silk Binder for the Dual Bladed Chain or the Parasol. For both Palamute and Palicos, the choice of weapon will be completely up to you. Don't forget endemic life around the map. Gathering spare birds is of course a standard and doesn't really need any explaining. Everyone should be doing it. But there's a bunch of endemic life that often gets completely overlooked in this fight. Making use of these can result in tons of free damage, especially in multiplayer. The Paratoad you saw me pick up a moment ago is literally 2 seconds away from a green spare bird and almost never gets picked up. Such a shame. And if we jump over to subcamp 1, we have multiple endemic life forms that can be picked up super fast as well. We get to grab a marionette spider, some more spear birds, an escar go for healing, and a second marionette spider on the way down. It takes about 15 seconds to grab these and has a huge payoff. Being able to launch Valstrax into a wall twice with the spiders and get a free paralysis from the toad has huge value. It generates openings for the entire team to get in free damage and gives you more control over the fight. Next up, get Wyvern Rides in as soon as possible. Often you can do so on your way to the monster while gathering spare birds or endemic life. Not only are they free damage, but these again will open up more opportunities for the whole team to get in free hits. Depending on how long the fight takes, you might even be able to use the same monster for Wyvern Riding twice. And if the monster is something like Rajang, Magnamalo or even Valkana, you are sitting on an absolute gold mine for free damage. Some of those Wyvern rides can give you upwards of 8000 free damage, that is massive. So make sure you grab those Wyvern rides early. Be generous with healing and forecasters. There are no specific items that are necessary for the fight. But if you're in multiplayer, make sure you bring dust of life and life powders, as well as materials to craft more. Being mindful of your teammates goes a long way in this fight. And if you're in trouble or need to restock, don't hesitate to use a Farcaster right away. It's better to jump back to camp for a few seconds than adding a potential feint to the list. And as I mentioned in a note earlier, keep in mind that the wide range skill is a great option as well to add some extra survivability to your team. Try to stay calm and keep a cool head. This might sound super obvious, but a lot of deaths in this fight happen due to hunters panicking. It's super important to stay calm when you get hit and don't rush the escape out of all situations. You can actually predict a lot of his attacks and movements by watching his wings. If he's readying his left wing, the attack will go to the left. If he's readying the right, it will go to the right. Watch the wing and escape in the opposite direction. If you find yourself having trouble with any of his spin attacks, a single level of evasion and dodging into the spin rather than away from it can actually make dodging those attacks quite easy. And while a lot of his moves look intimidating and deal huge amounts of damage, most of them can actually be dodged or countered with a little practice. Oh, by the way, if I catch you carving his tail while he's still in the area, I'm throwing a shoe at your ass. RIP to the guy that ended our quest that way. Come on man, unnecessary. If you have any further tips, make sure you put them in the comments below so other hunters can benefit from them as well. I hope these tips helped you out and make the fight a bit easier. Thanks for watching, take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.